Hi, my name is Azri. I'm a graduate student at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, India. Today, I'll talk about the most common problem in large scale distributed systems. When we're doing the parallel computation job, completion time is limited by the slowest server, which is called the straggler. <clears throat> One way to mitigate these stragglers is to have coded redundancy of subtasks. But this could have an impact of how many servers we are using. We propose a solution which takes the advantage of coded redundancy, but at the same time, it deals with the cost as well. Before going further, the first natural question to ask is, why do we even care about this problem? Large scale distribution and large scale storage is ubiquitous and is everywhere, and there is no single server doing it. Typical paradigm is that large scale computation and large scale storage is done at multiple server nodes and the straggler is a reality. Some of the examples of the use cases are cloud computing, cluster computing, distributed database, content streaming, cloud storage, and cloud service. Distributed computing uses multiple distributed servers to process the job, where a job is divided into subtasks and launched each on a single server. The execution time of a task on a machine has stochastic variations due to many contributing factors such as co-hosting, virtualization, hardware, and network variations. Considering this randomization, we assume that the service completion times at each server is a random variable and are IID in nature. When a job is divided into six subtasks and, and assigned each onto a unique server, the completion time of a job is the largest completion of all six server times. The problem with this setup is that slowest subtasks are determining the job execution time, and these slowest subtasks are called stragglers. One of the key challenges in cloud computing is the problem of straggling servers, which can significantly increase the job completion time. In order to mitigate the effect of stragglers, one can introduce redundancy in computation. In the setup shown at the right, we consider MDS coded redundancy, where subtasks are encoded to more number of coded subtasks, and each server is working on unique coded subtasks which implies that the coded subtask completion at any six out of these 10 distinct servers results in the completion of original job. The completion time of a job in this setup is the completion time of sixth largest completion of all 10 server times. As soon as any six of the subtasks are completed, the remaining servers are killed. This redundancy method guarantees us in lowering the completion time by mitigating the stragglers, but it's more expensive. Because maximum number of servers that were active here are 10, and the utilization cost is the aggregate completed work by all the servers in this duration. Whereas in the first setup, the maximum number of servers that were in use are six, and utilization cost is less here. Even though we're receiving something, the query redundancy at one end in completion time, we are losing at the other end in server utilization cost. In order to decrease this cost, one can think of delayed relaunching of servers. In this delayed relaunch scheme, instead of starting all the servers in the beginning, we're gonna add the available servers in multiple stages. Instead of starting from six, as in the no redundancy version, or starting from all 10, as in the redundancy version, like in the previous slide, here, we'll start with some number of servers, and then we'll add the remaining servers in the later stage. The design choices here are how many servers to start with, and when should I start the remaining servers? One way to take care of this working time is, the first one is called the initial number of servers, and the second one is called the choice of working time. One way to take care of this working time is you add the remaining servers when certain number of tasks are completed. The number of tasks, subtasks that, are, that we need to complete for the forking point is called the fork task threshold. Here, for our purpose, we focus on the service completion time 
when a fixed number of servers complete their task. We want to decide in a way such that how should the parameters, initial servers and forked up threshold be chosen so that both the metric completion time and the utilization cost are optimized. Two closest works that studied a similar problem are here. One work is by Bang. They considered a job which is divided into K subtasks. They initialize K servers for each of the subtasks. As soon as a fraction of them are finished, they launched our new replicas for each unfinished task. And their work is by Actas. They considered MDS query version of a job in which K subtasks are encoded into encoded subtasks. They initialize K servers at the beginning and as soon as the fixed duration is crossed, they launch the remaining query subtasks. In contrast to these two works, starting only with the required number of subtasks, we initialized with general number of servers. As soon as some of the initial servers are completed, we launch the remaining servers. We find out that the choice of initial servers matters. Let's again take an example where we have 10 total servers, six subtasks, MDS coded to 10 coded subtasks, so that once we get any six of them, we can end the computation. Here, initial number of servers we choose are seven, and we will start adding the rest of the three servers when two of the initial seven are complete. Stage zero is from the beginning of the seven servers till two complete, and stage one is from the point of two completions till the six completions. The completion time here is the sum of inter-service completion times of stage zero and stage one. First two cars are coming from stage zero and the last four are coming from stage one. Here in stage zero, till the first completion, seven servers are on and in between the first and the second service completions of stage zero, six servers are on. And at this point, when two servers complete, we have added the three remaining servers. So the total number of servers are eight in between the last completion of stage zero and the first completion of stage one and so on. It is clear from this slide that to compute the mean of completion time and mean of utilization cost, we have to compute the mean of inter-service completion times. And if you compute this easily, we are done. To do this analytical computation, we choose shifted exponential for core subtask completion at each server. This turns out to be a good model for service completion times in the data center networks. But even then, everything is not easy. What is easy is that if you are before stage zero and after certain time in stage one, what happens is that the inter-service completion times remains memory less, exponentially distributed because of the synchronization in which we start the servers. What is the difficult part is the region in between where we have servers already working are in their memoryless phase, but the servers which are started at the forking point are in that constant phase. Due to the synchronization of the servers initialization at the forking time and at the initial time, the residual subtask completion times are memoryless after the constant shift both in stage zero and stage one. These regions are denoted by green and yellow regions. Since each service time is independent, it is easy to compute the duration between the two coded subtasks in these two regions. However, even under such a simplified model, finding the mean inter-coded subtask completion times remains difficult in the light blue region, which denotes the initial part of the stage one until the constant shift C. This is due to the fact that four servers have not reached their memoryless stage and the residual time for next completion depends on the number of completions since the beginning of stage one. Therefore, we need to find the distribution of number of coded subtask completions in this light blue region and the distribution of inter-coded subtask completion times conditioned on this number of completions in the light blue region. Combining these two results, we can find the closed form expressions for mean completion time and mean utilization cost. 
Here we consider 24 servers and 12 subtasks. MDS coded to 24 subtasks. Since the initial number of servers could be any number from between 1 and 24, we separated the analysis into two cases, of which one possibility is to start with initial number of servers which are always less than the required number of coded, task, coded subtasks 12. In the first picture, we are plotting the mean utilization cost with respect to the folks task threshold, how many jobs we need before we start the new service. It turns out that for, for any choice of initial service and folk task threshold, the utilization cost remains same and is same as that of no forking case. Remember, in no forking case, we initialize all the available servers at the beginning itself and there is no forking in it. In the second picture, we are plotting the mean job completion time with respect to folk task threshold. The mean completion time is increasing as we increase the folk task threshold. If we make the threshold larger and larger, that means if we wait for more, more and more coded subtasks to complete before we add the remaining servers, it will take longer time for the whole job to finish. Second thing we notice is that when we increase the initial number of servers, this whole curve is shifted downwards. With the same total number of servers, 24 and 12 subtasks, MDS coded to 24 coded subtasks, the other possibility is to start with initial number of servers, which are always greater than or equal to the required number of coded subtasks, 12. In the first picture, we're plotting the mean utilization cost with respect to the folks that threshold. The mean utilization cost is decreasing as we increase the folks that threshold. Here, when we increase the initial number of servers, the curves are not shifted either upwards or downwards. They are overlapping. In the second picture, we are plotting the number of servers. In the second picture, we're plotting the mean completion time with respect to the folk task threshold. As we had talked in the previous slide, the mean completion time is increasing as we are increasing the folk task threshold and the curves are shifted downwards with increase in the initial number of servers. Here, we plot the trade-off of mean utilization cost and mean completion time for different values of initial servers. For the case where the initial number of servers are always greater than or equal to the required number of codes of task 12. As you see that when initial number of servers increase, the mean job completion time decreases by trading it off with the mean utilization cost. But this flexibility is not there when you fix the initial number of servers. If you want to work at low utilization cost, careful choice of initial servers allows you to decrease the cost at the expense of increasing the job completion time. We find out that in order to get a good trade off point, choice of initial number of servers really matters. In summary, for an MDS coded job, we analyzed a delayed rerun scheme in which we specifically analyzed the single forking. We analytically computed the mean service completion time and mean utilization cost with shifted exponential service times and studied the effect of initial servers and folk task threshold on these two metrics and we found out that the choice of initial number of servers really matters. We want to extend this work of single forking delayed relaunch scheme to multi forking and the analysis in this paper provide insights on how to efficiently fork a job in lightly loaded scenarios. And the queuing analysis with forking is not straightforward and remains open. Thank you.